I embarked on this, and it was how I started knowing uh, I, I, the Elaine Steele was a gatekeeper. When Rosa Parks moved up to Detroit, she worked at a rag factory for a while with Elaine Steele, where they were making like just garments out of a thing. She would have to take a bus in Detroit. We sometimes forget in our country that celebrity doesn't equal wealth. And you know, Rosa Parks was never a wealthy a, a person. She had to work her whole life to make a living. Um, and the, um, I wanted to do it, and I finally met Elaine at DuPont Circle afterwards cafe here and pitched myself to interview her and get to spend time with her. And Elaine let me feel that she wanted an African-American woman to be the one that wrote it. And it was, she said, I love your work and all this. Well, I went back that evening to my, my room and my phone rang and Elaine said, okay, I didn't like my telling you that. We'll help you any way we could. And at that point, they all, the people around Rosa Parks just sort of allow me into her life to go to the AME Church in Detroit or to an apartment overlooking the Detroit River in Windsor, to the Underground Railroad. I believe H, I was with you in uh, Beverly Hills at one point with her, and, and, um, and Detroit and Montgomery with uh, Johnny May Carr. And it was unbelievable for me because Rosa Parks was, had the deepest, most beautiful soul you can imagine. There was nothing not to like about her.